with television, you can continue to sort of capture various things as they happen. You know, celebratory gunfire, this, that, and the other. That doesn't really work with still photography. You have to find something almost symbolic, almost iconic, that people remember, that people can connect with. Um, there was a fierce summer storm in Tiananmen Square. Um, most people, many people left the square because it really rained incredibly hard. So there was I virtually on my own with this guy above me and it just felt powerful. I mean, the sky was dark and foreboding. For me, it, in a certain way, crystallized the revolution that had taken place in China. We arrived in this forest and this clearing and suddenly all these boys started appearing out of the forest and they all had these uh, wooden Kalashnikovs that they'd made. The, you've got to remember these kids were sleeping under the trees. They had literally nothing. The only thing they had was the plastic bags that the food aid came in. And then Nkomo got up on the truck and he, he stood on the top and he just... All he said was Zimbabwe, and the whole, I mean, there must have been two, three thousand people just went Z like this. It was absolutely extraordinary. And uh, I was standing next to him and managed to get what I thought was some quite incredible pictures. I was involved in a, in a thing that, uh, an event that brought South Africa to, to, to light in this country and around the world, which was a shooting at Sharpville which was a bit like the miners thing the other day. In fact, um, I went along and I think about six or seven people were killed and a whole lot wounded. And I was the only photographer there. For various reasons, I was the only photographer there. Um, and that, I thought, was going to be the beginning of a change of power and a change of government in the country. However, nothing happened, essentially. Yeah, there was a bit of controversy afterwards and the government sort of panicked for a while, but then they got to grip again. 